Welcome to Well Round of Mama's YouTube channel. Today we are being silly, but want to talk about a serious subject in pregnancy, and that is what is groupie strep? Why do we test for it? What are the concerns? And how can you be preventative? My name is Sherry. I'm joined by Tiffany and Sarah, and we are all midwives here at Well Rounded Mama. So if you find this video helpful, like, subscribe, ring the bell, share with your friends. What is groupie strep, Tiffany? It's like I get to quiz people or something. <laughs> Groupie strep is a bacteria that you can carry in your body. It comes from your intestines. If you have an active infection, it can cause an infection in baby if it's present in mom. So Groupie strep, we find that up to 30% of women have been mm -hmm. found to that they test positive for something called Groupie strep. It's not like strep not throat. Strep. You're completely asymptomatic. There's no smell, there's no discharge, there's no fever, mm -hmm. there's nothing. Why we test all women is because although it might not affect you, it could potentially affect your baby. It can cause an upper respiratory infection in your baby. So Sarah, mm -hmm. are you ready for your quiz? I'm ready. Tell me how we test women in pregnancy. So it's done by a swab. It's a culture, a little bit different than a pap, same general area. It's usually done either vaginally and rectally. I think that's what obstetricians do. Some midwives will even do it on the perineum, which is in between the vagina and the rectum. Basically that general area is swabbed and then they run a culture to see if that bacteria grows. When do they do that? Around 36 weeks. I've seen some physicians pull it sooner than that now. Sometimes when routine, I'm getting yeah. records, I'm mm -hmm. seeing it pulled in the first trimester. However, routinely we're pulling that around 35, 36 weeks. Pull that swab and that culture. What that culture indicates is that you carry it, not that you have an active infection. And this is where midwifery care and obstetric care differentiate a little bit. The information I'm going to give you, you can certainly take back to your care provider, but please know this is purely based on some European protocols and standards because they have better outcomes than we do here in the United States, as well as the ability to do further testing. What we do here is we test all of our clients that consent. We actually let them go into the bathroom and do it themselves because you know where your vaginal opening is. It literally looks like a Q-tip and it's just a quick little swab. We send it to a lab within four to five days, we get results back. If it comes back positive, if you fall in that less than 30%, we then collect urine and send that to the lab. And what we're looking for is to find out if you have an active group B strep infection, because there's a difference between being a carrier and actively having an infection. We base all of our results and information based on whether you have an active infection or not, which is surprisingly really uncommon. Let's talk a little bit about some optional treatments. So say you test positive, whether it be we know that you're carrying it or whether we know there's an active infection. We know for a fact that babies only get sick from active infections. So if you're GBS positive and you're having your baby at the hospital, they want to get two doses of IV antibiotics in you four hours apart before delivery. If you get to the hospital and you have your baby precipitously within an hour and you don't get the antibiotics, then they're going to keep your baby for 48 hours and possibly do a septic workup on your baby. If you get there eight hours before you deliver and you get both doses, you still potentially could have your baby tested after delivery. It just depends on the pediatrician. And the reason why they use antibiotics is because there was a small study done that said that women that were administered IV, specifically antibiotics, and why it's the courses it is, this is not treating you, it's preventative care for the baby. Mm -hmm. right? Because that antibiotics isn't going to change the fact that you may or may not be carrying groupie strep. That is why they administer that intravenously, hoping enough of that goes to the baby that they're preventing an upper respiratory infection in the baby. That contact with groupie strep doesn't happen until after after your water has broke, that is why they administer it in the time that they do is because from the time that your water breaks, to the time your baby is born is the time that they're being potentially in contact with that. We treat it a little bit different because European guidelines and standards means we're monitoring for fever. We're not suggesting women stay at home with their membranes ruptured for longer than 18 hours. We're not doing vaginal exams because that vaginal exam is where your risk of infection comes from. What drives me a little crazy is a lot of times they think of it as the amount of vaginal 
vaginal exams? Well, we're just going to do this one vaginal exam. And it is the very first vaginal exam that introduces the most bacteria and the most risk. It's that very first vaginal exam. So let's be gross for a moment. Groupie strep lives in your intestines, which means it comes out of your rectum, travels to your perineum, into your vagina or birth canal potentially. Mm -hmm. And so the chances of it reaching all the way up into your cervix are really low. However, what happens when somebody does a vaginal exam? They're introducing bacteria. Yeah. Even with sterile From gloves. the bottom to the top. So it doesn't even matter. The sterile gloves don't, don't play a role in that at all. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it's no vaginal exams especially after a water is ruptured and monitoring for fever as well as not allowing women to be home for longer than 18 hours. Now, can you prevent group B strep? There's theories you can. There's some studies that show that there's been some effect. What we do know if we consume garlic that it does get rid of that group B strep bacteria. We just don't know how long it gets rid of it for. We know that garlic plays a really big role we know that probiotics play a really big role. Most of us down here, the moment that our clients, whether they have an active infection or they carry, most of the time we put our clients on a regimen of garlic, whether that's capsules or cloves, and probiotics. Especially if their water has broke. If their water has broke, we definitely would like to see them consuming vitamin C, especially during labor. I like the vitamin C regimen. Mm -hmm. Since I have a negative opinion about it, maybe you want to talk to people about hemocrens. Do I have a positive opinion about it? Oh shoot, do you have a positive opinion? No. Oh, you can do have a cleanse every four hours in labor. That's a protocol that a lot of midwives have you follow is douching yeah. with Hippoclins during labor. But again, I don't know why it isn't that same idea and concept of a vaginal exam that although it is an antimicrobial and disinfectant. Well, and as this once wise person told me, your vagina is not a straw. It's not gonna suck anything up there. Who said that? Yeah. But the reason why I said that is we were because, divinely yeah, <laughs> like if our vaginas, yonis, birth canals, if they had the perfect flora health, they were the perfect specimens of health, which probiotics and fermented foods, I'm a huge fan of fermented foods. I have kombucha every day. They help just kind of keep that flora, which you kind of, you have a baby that's coming out there anyway. So it should be like an ideal, it's a good goal to have that your vaginal flora is lovely happy and happy mm -hmm. and that baby has all out. the good bacteria yes because they, they have it. done studies that say babies that are born cesarean are not getting that bacteria. are not getting that they call that what do they call that microbiome microbiome mm -hmm. microbiome mm -hmm. yeah yeah we're not generally oh, giving obese water birth oh Mm -hmm. Water birth lessens the strain of droopy stress. Yeah. So good. Dilution is the solution. Dilution. Dilution is the solution. <laughs> we will leave a link to Barbara Harper's website, um, Water Birth International. She's a friend of ours, and she says dilution is the solution when it comes to all things that might be coming out in the tub. And so we'll leave that link. <laughs> Another really good link is Evidence-Based Birth has some really good information about group B strep. We will leave that link as well because there is some really good evidence-based care. I do strongly encourage my clients to be tested for it. I've never, I don't think, had a client <laughs> not being willing to test for it. I like to know whether it's something I'm dealing with or not. So like I tell my clients ahead of time, like don't go do a garlic whatever before you get tested because if you carry it, I wanna know that this is something that we yeah. should work on and monitor for. And we do monitor for fever and labor. We do very little vaginal exams. Generally, that's kind of a routine practice for us. But I know that it's a very scary thing because there are sick babies that contract group B strap, but the majority of those babies are born in a hospital, even after they've received the antibiotics. All the years I've done this, I've only seen one baby contract group B strap, and it was somebody who did not follow protocols. There are ways that you can be preventative, but kind of remembering that kind of that healthy flora plays a really, really big role in general, as a general statement, I think it's fair to state mm -hmm. that that should be everyone's goal, regardless of whether that you have GBS or not. Anything that's gonna build your immune system up is going to help you fight off any kind of bad bacteria. Oh, don't be afraid to have those kinds of questions. I know talking about like sex, intercourse, all the things, all the things <laughs> is very uncomfortable, to, but it's not to your midwife, nope. I assure you. So when you rather have conversations with somebody who knows a little something about that, it's kind of part of their job. Thanks for joining us. Please like and subscribe.
ring the bell if you found that video helpful, informative, and you would like to see more of our videos. Um, we loved visiting with you. And if you have any questions about groupie strep, please take them to your care provider. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to want the best for your baby. That's what everybody on your birth team should want. We love visiting with you. Have a lovely week. Ooh, we should do the hear no evil speak, no evil see, no evil sign. There, go do it. Oh, that would be so much easier. <laughs> I need a new job. <laughs> My name's Tip. My name's Tiffany. You're name's Tiffany today. <laughs> Hi, Tiffany. Can I be Tiffany for the rest of the day? Sure. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Anyways, the reason why I said that because people freak out about water birth. I know. And we mm -hmm. we should definitely make a video about water yeah. birth. Like your vagina's not a straw. It's not going to suck stuff up into it to get an mm -hmm. infection. Like, mm -mm. could you imagine every time you got out of the swim pool, <laughs> you'd, you'd pee out your. <laughs> <laughs> this one might not be You're cooking out of the bathtub. You're like, oh, oh no. what the happened? The ocean just came out of me. <laughs> gross. That's gross. That's so bad. That would be really bad. <laughs> like if we should keep some numbers on that. We yeah. Should. We should we talk to our stats. our stat department. <clears throat> Let's call them up. Call them up. Ring, ring. Ring, ring. Oh, it was you. <laughs> Your vagina is not a straw. Actually. It isn't a straw. Could you imagine if our vaginas were straws? <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> Suck up all the time. You're sitting on the couch and all of a sudden you're like, where'd that go? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was a good one. <laughs> Where did that child go? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Ooh. We. Last week, we made a video about foods you can and can't eat. And I have to tell you, kombucha is one I get a question about a lot. Mm -hmm. is whether I can eat kombucha. And people are like, ooh, it's fermented. I'm like, ooh, last time I was intoxicated after my kombucha. Right. <laughs> Ridiculous amount of kombucha. You know, I'm just consuming a kind of truckload.